Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. If this is your first time here, my name is Risa and today I am going to be answering all of your questions about my recent European cruise. I asked for questions both on my YouTube community page and also over on Instagram. Now in case you're thinking, Risa, I had no idea you went on a European cruise. Well, I did mention it in several videos leading up to when I left on, I think it was August 1st. Now I know you probably watch a lot of YouTube videos or maybe you don't, but I completely understand if you may have missed me mentioning that I was going on this Virgin Voyages cruise with my husband, my best friend, and her husband. Now before I get into answering any of your questions, just some basic information about the cruise. It was a seven night cruise out of Barcelona, Spain. It made two stops in France, Marseille, and can, and then two stops in Spain, Palma de Mallorca and Ibiza. So I'm going to pull up your YouTube questions and I've got 32 questions here, but some of them are repeats. One of the questions I read was, why did we choose Virgin Voyages for this cruise? Back in January or over New Year's Eve, I went on my first Virgin Voyages cruise with my husband, my two sons, my sister, her husband, their three kids, and then also one of my cousins. My aunt and uncle were supposed to come with us, but unfortunately my uncle had to have hip replacement surgery, so they did not go, but they did send my cousin. Virgin Voyages is 18 and up. There are no children on Virgin Voyages. So that was one of the reasons why we chose that one. Well, actually my sister chose it. And I was a little reluctant because I had been on a cruise in 2019 with my husband and kids that went out of Long Beach, California. It was a carnival cruise, and I was not a huge fan of carnival cruises. They do have a reputation of being a little bit more, um, I guess you could say not as upscale as some other cruise lines, but it was a brand new ship. This was December 2019, and it was going to be, I think, only the ship's second or third sailing. But even though it was a brand new ship, I just wasn't very impressed by it. And I also happened to get really, really seasick. I had brought everything I thought I needed with me on that cruise, like C-bands, Dramamine, other anti-nausea medications, and I thought I would be okay, but I wasn't. I was miserable. The entire last day and night of our cruise, I was in bed. I could not get out of bed. My husband had to pack for me, so I swore off cruises at that time. But when my sister came to me and said, hey, we're gonna go on this New Year's cruise with the kids and it's out of Miami, we'd really love for you guys to come. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna suck it up, I'm gonna go. And we went and we had a great time. Now I do have a video review of Virgin Voyages posted here on YouTube that I will link down below in the description box. So obviously if you wanna go hear all the details about Virgin Voyages and that specific cruise, I encourage you to watch that video. But in the summary, I basically say that while I did have a great time, I wouldn't necessarily go on Virgin Voyages again. As I mentioned moments ago, I had been on a Carnival cruise in 2019, late 2019. Before that, I had been on a cruise, I think it was, oh, I don't remember the cruise line. It may have been Royal Caribbean. And that was back in 2017. And that cruise left out of Galveston, Texas. I don't recall getting seasick on that one. Prior to that, it had been at least 10 to 15 years since I had been on a cruise. When I was younger, when I was a teenager, 13, 14, 15, 16, my parents used to take my sister and I on a cruise almost every Christmas break, but I don't really remember those trips very much. And honestly, after that Virgin Voyages cruise over New Year's, I really thought I was not going to go on another Virgin Voyages cruise. But my best friend and her husband had a cruise planned on Virgin Voyages for March that got canceled. So what they did was they transferred the money they paid for that cruise to this one that we went on, this European cruise out of Barcelona. And when they did that, they asked us if we wanted to join them. And my husband and I do like to take a summer vacation every year. So my husband and I talked it over. We thought, hey, why not? The itinerary looks great. So we used the same travel agent, my friend and I, even though the travel agent is in Michigan where my friend is, it's easy to work with a travel agent out of state and I always, always recommend using a travel agent because I see no reason not to. They are basically the middleman for you. 
Not only do they have direct lines to these cruise companies, if you need help, they have different lines than what we regular people have. Travel agents have an in with these cruise companies, especially if they are like a certified agent for that cruise line. And I personally just feel an extra sense of security using a travel agent because they do have that ability to fix things for you. So you don't have to stress about it or have that anxiety. And I am a very, very anxious traveler from the moment I leave the house to head to the airport, I have anxiety. And even leading up to the trip, I have anxiety. So just knowing that someone else is there to handle things for me or to answer my questions if they come up, I don't have to be calling the cruise line, she takes care of everything. And we used her also for our family trip to London and Paris. She set up all of our drivers to pick us up from the airport. She booked our hotels. She booked our train from London to Paris. My travel agent does not do flights, but there are travel agents out there that can do everything for you. And sometimes they even have airfare and vacation packages. And using a travel agent is free. They make their commissions through the hotels and the cruise lines, but you are not being charged more so that they can get a commission. If you went right now and looked and priced out a cruise on Virgin Voyages for whatever date, for whatever itinerary, and then asked a travel agent to give you a price, they're either going to give you the exact same price or they're going to get you something even better. So I highly, highly recommend using a travel agent. So one of the questions here is, can you tell us why you guys picked Virgin? So I think I covered that Virgin was not my pick. My sister picked it for the cruise last winter, and then we just decided to join our friends for this one this summer. Have you been on other cruises before? If so, have you always gone with Virgin? If you have been on other cruises, how did they compare? I think I answered that one too. Um, I don't remember my earlier cruises. All I can compare it to is the last Virgin cruise I took and the Carnival one I took in December 2019 with my husband and kids. I do not remember much about the one that I think again was Royal Caribbean. Can you show us what you packed, what you wish you packed, and maybe what you picked up at the European stores? I also want to know if you picked up new jewelry or clothes, purses or handbags. Um, I think I packed kind of perfectly with the exception of the makeup. I did end up packing way too much makeup. I decided early on in the cruise that I did not want to take the time coming up with new looks for each outfit every night like I do when I'm at home. If I'm going to an event here at home or I'm going out to dinner, I do plan my outfit in advance and I like to experiment with different looks, but I really didn't want to waste much time on the cruise. I didn't want to take an hour to do my makeup every single night. I wanted to get it kind of down to a 30 minute glam, which I did. But as far as clothing, I think I did a really good job. I pre-planned every night's look. I knew that we were going out to a fun restaurant in Ibiza, STK, so I knew I wanted to have a fabulous dress for that night. There's also the Scarlet Night where everyone wears red. Virgin Voyage's signature color is red, so they have this Scarlet Night, and I found this red dress on Amazon, and it is fabulous, and it was so comfortable and my bag is also from Amazon. A lot of people asked about fashion, and I did post here on YouTube and also on Instagram and also on TikTok a short, well here on YouTube it's called a short, a 60 second video where I showed my full look from each night. Now unfortunately with YouTube shorts, you cannot link anything in the description box like you can on these long form videos. So if you missed that video, I'm going to link that. And then I'm also, because this is a full length video, going to link all of the dresses. So even if I don't show all of the outfits in this particular video, I want you to go check out that shorts video, come back to this description box, and you should be able to find the links there if the item is still available. Another thing that I don't like about YouTube shorts is that if you use music that's not part of their awful small royalty free collection you can't even tag anything through youtube shopping that said i do also have the links to everything shown in that video on my like to know it page so all the fashion is there i don't know how youtube pushes out long form content to you all versus short form because obviously a lot of you did not see the two short form videos that i put up after my cruise. One was kind of like a summary video, just like a fun, everything we did in 60 seconds video. And then, like I said, the other one was the outfits from every night. So just to let you know for the future, 
If you don't see me post for a while, go to my page and look at the Shorts tab because it is very likely that I will have posted at least one or two YouTube Shorts if I haven't posted a full-length video in a while. And I did skip an entire week while I was gone, I think, of long-form content. All right, back to the packing. I did have an outfit pre-designated for every night. I had it in the Notes tab of my phone and I have a rolling rack in my room. So I hang up every outfit, every dress, the shoes I'm going to wear. I do try to wear the same pair of shoes with multiple outfits. I did end up taking, I think like four pairs of heels, a pair of flip-flops, a pair of sneakers. I travel in my sneakers and then everything else goes into the suitcases. For daytime, I just went very basic. It was so, so incredibly hot and humid. We spent two nights in Barcelona before the cruise and one night in Barcelona after the cruise. And I do highly, highly recommend that if you're taking a cruise out of wherever, unless you live in the departure city, I recommend getting there at least, at least one night before because you will encounter flight delays most likely, which we did. You will also need time to adjust to any time zone differences. I've got to say it took me several days to get used to the nine hour time difference. As I was saying, it was extremely hot and humid. So during the day, I wore these shorts from Zara and a tank top or a t-shirt and either my sneakers or some flip-flops. And I did buy some other shoes to wear walking around before the cruise, but they ended up being uncomfortable. You know how you really don't know if a shoe is going to be comfortable until you wear them for several hours or you're walking a long distance? It's just so hard to tell. People can say, oh yeah, this shoe is comfortable, this shoe is comfortable, but until your foot is in that shoe walking for one mile or two miles, you cannot know for sure if a shoe is going to be comfortable on you. I actually ended up wearing these sandals from Olakai. They were just the most comfortable. The sandals I had purchased before the trip were these right here that I was told by the sales associate at Nordstrom were super, super comfortable. But unfortunately, after a while, they did scrape my heels. I normally don't love anything that goes between my toes either, but these shoes do not bother me whatsoever. I would never wear these shoes somewhere like New York City because the New York City streets are just so dirty. I remember the first time I ever walked around New York City in flip-flops, came back to my hotel room, I saw that my feet were so incredibly dirty, but Barcelona, the streets of Barcelona are a lot cleaner. My feet were not disgustingly dirty and I had no blisters. I also really like to wear cotton maxi dresses for daytime. For example, when we went to Cannes, we had hired a driver to take us over to Monaco and she stopped in, I think it was Grasse was the name of the city. We went to this perfumery to see how they made perfume, which was really cool, really interesting. And for that excursion that we did not book through the cruise, I'll get to that information momentarily, I wanted something a little bit you know, dressier and shorts and a tank top. So for that, I wore this dress from Farm Rio. So I found packing to be pretty easy. I am not a last minute packer. I have never been a last minute packer. I like to know exactly what I'm wearing each night. I do bring some extra options. I did throw in a couple extra dresses, some more casual dresses in case I didn't feel like getting dressed up that night. One of the dresses I thought I would wear on a later night during the cruise, I ended up wearing earlier in the cruise. I also ended up buying a new dress at Mango in Barcelona. I bought this dress. I love Mango. I did not realize how much cheaper it is. I mean, I knew that it would be a little bit cheaper in Spain because I believe that's where Mango is made or that's where the brand was created in Spain. So they have a lot of mango stores and I ended up buying that dress and then I bought this blouse from Mango at the airport. And when I say the prices are cheaper in Europe for mango, they are a lot cheaper. This blouse was 69.99 euros and that equals about 77 US dollars. I went to go look this up on the US website, 139.99. So almost double. I didn't realize this until my husband and I were at the gate, you know, heading home. I said to my husband, I should go back and buy more because like half of what I would pay 
in the US. Prior to the cruise, during our two days in Barcelona, is when I purchased the ruffle dress and then also these silver earrings. They also had several Kiko Milano stores in Barcelona. I happen to love the Kiko Milano glosses. They used to have a Kiko store here in the US. I don't know if they have one still in New York, but they had one here in Las Vegas at the Fashion Show Mall, but it only lasted about a year and I was so bummed. I just think people didn't know enough about the brand. You can purchase Kiko products like these glosses on the Ulta Beauty website. I don't think they're available in any stores, but I wanted to go into like the big store when I was in Barcelona to take a look at everything. So I ended up purchasing three glosses, a blush and a mascara. By the way, the mascara is really, really good. So other than a little bit of makeup, some things from Mango, honestly didn't buy anything at any of the pharmacies. I wasn't really in the market for any designer bags. When I went to London and Paris a year and a half ago, that's when I sort of splurged and bought my Dior handbag, a Valentino handbag, a couple of things from Chanel. I also have a video about everything I bought during that trip that I can also link. And that was my 50th birthday year, so I did go a little bit overboard. Since then, the prices of a lot of luxury items have gone up to the point that I honestly don't even think that they're worth it anymore. I mean, some people don't think it's ever, it's ever been worth it to buy designer items. But long story short, I just wasn't really interested in buying anything designer on this trip. How to budget for a cruise and how expensive can it get? I don't drink, so I know that can lower the cost. Yeah, drinking for this cruise is, um, yeah, I can't even get my thoughts together on this. All right, so my husband and I did, on Virgin Voyages, they have something called Rockstar status. So there are certain cabins that put you at rock star level and give you certain um, extras like priority boarding, um, priority reservations because Virgin Voyages does not have a main dining room. Their ships have just different restaurants that you do need to make reservations for. And reservations open up, I think, 60 days for non-rock stars 90 days ahead for rock stars. So we were able to make all of our dinner reservations well before anybody else. You also have a concierge, a personal concierge to take care of everything you need in your room. And again, I go over this in that other video I did about the Virgin Voyages cruise, that full in-depth video. I even have a room tour. But what I'm getting at here regarding the alcohol is that if you are a rock star, you have bottles of alcohol in your room that do not get replaced, but there is alcohol in the room. When I say do not get replaced, I mean if you finish them, you don't get new bottles. Our friends were mega rock stars, which is the next tier up, and they actually had a full bar that did get replenished if they finished one bottle of something, it was replenished. And we also, because they were mega rock stars, they also had unlimited drinks and they could order two drinks at a time. So if my friend went and ordered a drink at the bar, she could order one for me as well, and they would be free. And her husband could order one for my husband, who really doesn't drink, but he did have a couple of drinks you know, on the cruise. He's on vacation. So, I mean, truly, my husband never drinks when he's at home. We actually call him Passport Ian because his name is Ian, and he only drinks alcohol when he's somewhere where he needs a passport to get to, like when we're in Mexico or you know, on this cruise, he did have some cocktails. So my friend's husband would order him a drink. And then at dinner, they would get one bottle of wine up to $90 for free. So we basically had this bar tab. If you're using a travel agent or maybe Virgin Voyages is running a promotion, you have something called bar tab. There's bar tab and sailor loot. And bar tab is basically just that. You use it to cover your bar tab. And the drinks aren't crazy expensive, especially in comparison to what you pay here in Las Vegas for a drink, which is usually anywhere from $18 to $22 for a little cocktail. The drinks on the ship were like $13 to $16. I actually said to my husband at one point that they should offer rock star status without the alcohol option and make it a little bit less expensive. Because we ended up not drinking like any of the alcohol in our room. All of those bottles, we left them behind. We could have taken them back with us. In fact, on our last cruise that we took with the kids and my sister and all of her kids, we did take some of the bottles back with us, but then they made the suitcase too heavy, so we had to get rid of them. But 
I do think that if you are not a drinker, you may not want to go as a rock star because you are paying premium just to have those bottles of alcohol in your room. Okay, now I wanna look at some of the Instagram questions. At the stops, do you feel like you had enough time to explore the countries? No, not really. Um, but that said, my husband and I and our friends are not really um, like museum people. We're not the kind of people that you know need to see every old church or um, yeah, I, I don't even know how to put it. Um, we did have a, I think I mentioned this already, a driver that we hired through Viator or Viator. Um, they are a great resource for booking excursions. We did do one excursion through the cruise that I'll talk about in a moment, but for Marseille, Marseille and, um, can, can, I, I'm terrible pronouncing these things. I think I'm pronouncing them right, but I'm probably not. But anyway, we had a driver for four hours in Marseille. And then in Cannes, we had a driver for eight hours. And she's the one who drove us to the perfume factory and who drove us over to Monaco. And she was great about sharing information about um, the cities. She told us exactly how Monaco came to be and just gave us a lot of history on the country and the monarchy. She gave us such good information. She did take us to, actually I think that was in Marseille, um, the other driver, yeah, took us to a church that you could have gotten out and hiked up all of these, um, these stairs and stuff. And we just told him, yeah, we're not really hiking kind of people, especially in this heat and humidity. We did not want to hike up the steps of the church and go all the way to the top. I mean, there were beautiful views from where we were. So we just took it all in that way. But if you are someone who really, really likes to explore a city or a country like really in depth, then a cruise would probably not be for you. Are the rooms really big enough for two people with all our skincare, hair care, and makeup and clothes? It depends on what room you get. My room was because we paid more for a bigger room, a bigger bathroom, more storage. I did notice some of the smaller rooms as we were disembarking the ship and all the doors are open because you know they're going in there to clean and stuff. So I kind of peeked into the terrace suites and there was a little area, same as in my room, you know, to sit down and do your makeup. I always set up a little makeup station for myself. So I bring a travel mirror and then I bring my brushes and I lay everything out and there's plugs there. There's US outlets and European outlets right there on the vanity. So I would never do anything in the bathroom. I always just sat down and did my hair and makeup at the little desk that they had with a mirror. And I do believe all of the other terrace rooms had that. My kids room on the Virgin Cruise we took over the holidays, that one was an interior room and no, I would not recommend if you're someone who likes to get dressed up like I do, sit down and do your makeup, hair, all that, I would never get an interior room. I would make sure to check the layouts of all the rooms and here on YouTube you can find virtual tours of not only the entire ship but also of every different type of stateroom. Ours was called a Brilliant Suite. So it was a really good size, really spacious, really spacious bathroom. So that is going to be entirely dependent on your budget, how much you are willing to spend on your cabin. The next question is, how is the food? The food was really good overall. Typically in the mornings, I would just have room service for breakfast. You could order on the app before bed and tell them what you wanted them to bring to your room in the morning and at what time. And typically my husband and I would get some scrambled eggs, some fruit, some toast, and just sit out on our balcony. And somehow they always managed to make the scrambled eggs really runny. So I wasn't really a fan of their scrambled eggs, but the scrambled eggs you would get up in what they called the galley, which is kind of like their um, like cafeteria. Those were pretty good. And they did have a lot of good food up in the galley. And that was where we would usually just grab our lunch. You can get burgers, you can get pizza, you can get ramen. On the days we were in port, we would eat lunch just out wherever we were. And then like I was saying for dinners, there are a lot of different 
restaurants that you can make reservations at. There's a Mexican restaurant, there's a steakhouse, there's something called the Test Kitchen, which I have not been to because that is for real foodies. That is for people who like to try different flavors, who are very adventurous with their food. I am not one of those people, so I did not go to Test Kitchen. So what we did is we booked the restaurants we really did like twice. Do you think you can still enjoy a cruise even if doing it alone? Yes, there are actually a lot of people that go on cruises by themselves. And usually the cruise ship will put together activities for solo travelers. How easy is it to put on makeup in a ship cabin bathroom? I did not do that, as I think I already covered. I sat down at my vanity. A typical bathroom, from what I can remember, Probably not. I think that's why most cruise ships, and if I remember correctly, I think every cabin, even when it wasn't like a fancy cabin that I've ever been in, had a separate area outside of the bathroom where you could sit down and do your hair and makeup. What is the best cruise line that you have been on? I did not love Carnival. Royal Caribbean, if I remember, was pretty good. Um, Virgin is Okay, it's pretty good. My husband and I are thinking about taking a celebrity cruise for our 25th anniversary in May. We had a trip to Italy planned for our 20th anniversary that got foiled by COVID. So we're trying again. However, prices have really, really gone up since then. And we're thinking that a cruise might be more cost effective because you know you get all of your meals and well, most of your meals, some things are an extra like upcharge. There are certain restaurants and certain um, things on the menu at certain restaurants that are an upcharge, but I still think it will be cheaper than just going and staying at one place. Granted, again, we will not get to see all of these countries as well as we would be able to if we were just staying in that one place for several days, but I kind of like this. I do kind of like just getting a little taste of each location and then figuring out where I might want to go back to in the future. I know I definitely, definitely want to go back to Monte Carlo. I definitely want to go back to Barcelona. I definitely want to go back to Ibiza. Do you prefer Virgin Cruises over traditional lines? I mean, I think I'm at that age because I don't have small children anymore that I kind of like the idea of having a kid-free cruise. A lot of people ask about the party aspect of the cruise. And they seem to think that Virgin is a little bit more of a party cruise than some other lines, cruise lines. And I do think that's correct. I do think because there are no kids, people do feel a little bit freer and they don't have to worry about, you know, a parent saying, oh, don't do that in front of my kid. Not that anybody was doing anything lewd. Nobody that I could see was doing anything lewd. But I just think there's a little bit more of a fun party vibe than on some other cruises. Although Carnival, if I remember correctly, is, you know, known for being like a party cruise. I've heard different things about Royal Caribbean and Norwegian. They're a little bit more like middle of the road. And then cruise ships like Celebrity are a little bit more upscale. You have a tendency, especially on a European cruise, to have a lot less children anyway on the ship. So once I take that Celebrity cruise, I can better compare the cruise lines for you. Is everyone on the cruise as dressed up and elegant as you? You looked gorgeous. Thank you. Um, no. I equate cruise ships to like here in Vegas. If you feel like wearing a casual dress and flip-flops to dinner, nobody's going to say anything to you. Nobody's going to look at you funny. If you want to get dressed to the nines, nobody's going to look at you funny. People will probably compliment you. You might want to wear something dressier to dinner and then change if you want to go to the nightclub or go to listen to music. You can really wear whatever you'd like. Someone had asked me about a captain's dinner and I remember when I used to take cruises with my parents that there was always like a captain's dinner or a formal night on the cruise where everybody got super dressed up and men would be in tuxedos, women would be in gowns. On Virgin Voyages, at least, that does not exist. There is no designated formal night. A lot of people did tend to get a little bit dressier for Scarlet Night, but there were also people just in shorts, red shorts and red t-shirts or red button-downs for guys and just some white shorts or something. You don't have to get decked out. It's really much more relaxed in that regard than it used to be when I remember cruising like in the 80s and early 90s. 
And then another question is pressure to dress up. No, absolutely not. I just dress up because I like to. What perfume did you take on your cruise? I took two. I took this one from Letta Fragrances. I got tons of compliments on it. And then I took this one from Valentino. It is the Born in Roma Intense. I also get tons of compliments on this. Do you have a favorite Virgin Cruise Line ship? If yes, which one and why? Well, I've been on the Scarlet Lady now and the Valiant Lady. They're exactly the same. The layout is exactly the same. The restaurants are exactly the same. Everything's the same. Except Valiant Lady is a little bit of a newer ship. And I could kind of tell. We went on the Valiant Lady over the holidays. This time we were on the Scarlet Lady and I could tell that it wasn't as fresh and new as Valiant, even though it was the exact same ship. Were you concerned about catching a virus? My last cruise had a huge norovirus outbreak. I wasn't. Honestly, I was not really concerned. I wash my hands a lot. I always have washed my hands a lot. I take pretty much a pharmacy with me. I bring things like Advil, Pepto, Imodium, Tums, Pepsid, daytime and nighttime cold medicines, sore throat lozenges. I take it all so that in case I do get sick, I don't have to go to the infirmary. I have what I need right there in my cabin. Do you feel any motion enough so to make you feel nauseous? I think I sort of covered that. Um, it depends on the cruise. There are times that I have had motion sickness and times that I haven't. On this one, I honestly barely ever felt anything. Best part of the cruise that you would recommend to others? I would recommend, if you're comfortable with it, not just doing the cruise sanctioned excursions. And what I mean by if you're comfortable with that is if you are not on a cruise sanctioned excursion and you happen to miss the time, the all aboard time to get back on the ship, they will leave without you. If you are on one of their excursions that you bought through the cruise line, they will wait for you. If that excursion runs into any car trouble or shuttle trouble or anything, any trouble that makes it so you don't get back to the ship on time, the ship will wait for you. But if you book your own excursion like we did through Viator and something happens and you miss the all aboard time, they will leave without you. So we made sure that even when we did the eight hour day in Cannes, that we got picked up at nine, we got dropped off at five, the ship was not leaving till eight. So we knew we had plenty of time. We were still taking a risk, but we were willing to take that risk. And if you do happen to miss the ship, you have to find your way to the next port to get back on the ship. And I would say the best part of the cruise for us was just every night at dinner with our friends because we just had such a blast with them. I think who you travel with is the most important thing. If you're traveling with your spouse, your significant other, or just a friend, just make sure that you are compatible in your travel wants and needs and what you guys like. We were all, the four of us were very, very similar in that we like to just have really long drawn out dinners where we're drinking and chatting, having some dessert. Maybe we're gonna go have a cocktail before dinner at one of the lounges. Maybe we're gonna go listen to a live band after dinner. Now that's not to say had they wanted to go sing karaoke, we wouldn't have gone and sang karaoke with them. We would have, but perhaps not every other couple would be willing to compromise like that. Some people feel like, oh, it's my vacation. I'm gonna do what I want to. and. As long as you have that understanding before you travel with your companions, that if you don't want to do something they want to do, that you're gonna go do something on your own and that you just have to be okay with it. You kind of have to go with the flow. There are certain things that you're going to do together and there might be certain things that you won't do together. Oh, before I forget, I do wanna say one more thing about excursions. We did take one excursion through the cruise and we kind of wish we hadn't. We booked for, I think it was like $250 a person a four hour beach club in Ibiza experience that was from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. They had us go down to this meeting area at 845, which we did, and we got a bus number. So we went out and there were a bunch of, you know, big buses lined up with numbers, like you're going away to summer camp, get on the bus and it's so hot on the bus. All of the windows are closed and it is so incredibly hot 
and steam me on that bus. I was sitting in the inside seat by the closed window and my husband was on the outside seat. And as the bus started filling up, I told my husband that we were gonna have to change seats because I was gonna pass out. I was that hot, that sweaty. I was starting to have a panic attack. So he switched seats with me. Finally, someone from the back yells to the front, hey, is the air conditioner gonna turn on when we start moving? Like what's the deal with the air conditioning? And then the, not the driver, but the kind of the woman in charge at the front of the bus, she gets on her microphone and says, unfortunately, the air conditioning is broken on this bus. I wasn't sure I was going to make it. I mean, everybody was just drenched in sweat. Luckily, we left on time and the ride was only like 20 minutes. But then when we get there, she says that everybody has to meet back at this spot at 12.15. So at this time, it's like 9.30ish. So we're thinking 9.30 to 10.30, 10.30 to 11.30, 11.30 to 12.15, that's less than three hours, but we paid for a four hour excursion, not realizing that that four hours includes the travel time. But once we figured that out, we thought, oh well, it is what it is. So being that the bus ride was pretty horrible, I truly, truly thought I was going to pass out. And the fact that we weren't getting our full four hour excursion that we thought we were getting, the four of us were pretty disappointed and we really felt like it wasn't worth the money that we paid. We kept thinking we probably could have gone through Viator and gotten something similar for a lot less money or we probably could have taken a cab together to a beach club and paid whatever fee they charge for some day beds. Luckily, they had a different bus to pick us up and take us back to the ship because had they not, we had decided as a group that we were going to take a cab back to the ship because there was no way we were gonna sit on that hot, sweaty, 95 degree bus again. Okay, I feel like I've been talking for like two hours. Hopefully this video isn't too long. I know my throat is definitely starting to hurt from all of my yapping. I do hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. If you are not already subscribed to my channel, I hope that you will consider doing so. I do put out new content at least twice per week. You can also find more content from me over on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. My username is the same on every platform. It's Risa Does Makeup. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video.